we're now in the age of artificial intelligence and are all these questions about, so does AI kind of do what, what we humans do cognitively? Um, and there, there's even a more basic question, does AI actually think or does it do something sort of like thinking but it really isn't thinking? Yeah, so, so the first thing I wanna say because I feel like I see so many versions of this question and I always wanna to, want to qualify it and now I have the opportunity. <laughs> um, you know, I feel like lately we've been talking about AI as if it's one monolithic category. Um, but AI refers to lots of different things. If you actually look at our most contemporary you know, attempts to have something like artificial intelligence, there's lots of different kinds of systems with many different kinds of properties. I, I guess, I guess to, to be more specific, I am talking about sort of the large language okay, models, okay. you know, chat, GPT, that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. And I think that's often what people have in mind when they raise these questions because they're so impressive in their uh, capabilities and interactions with us. Um, I mean, I think the short answer is, uh, yes, it does a kind of thinking, but it might be a somewhat alien kind of thinking, right? I'm also willing to say that chimpanzees think and that, you know, possibly caterpillars think. I'm not sure. I don't know that much about caterpillars, right? But I think there's, I don't want to be um, sort of a human chauvinist about thinking, right? I think there's probably lots of forms of thinking. Um, but what contemporary large language models are doing, I think, is fairly different from, you know, the way human cognition works. Can you um, explain that? So one of, the, one of the biggest differences that you see between, say, a child and a large language model is the nature of the training that's required to get them to the point where they can have a conversation with you. So in the case of a large language model, it'll have gone through this training procedure that involves um, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of words. Um, children do not have access to the entire internet and to the entire corpus of written English by age five. They've been exposed to a lot of language, but not that much language. Um, nonetheless, they can have a really pretty reasonable conversation with you. Um, and so the learning mechanisms involved in those two cases must be somehow importantly different in order for the child to use just the input the child gets and to be able to reach that point. In that sense, the child's uh, input is much more impoverished than the large language model that gets you know, basically the full written corpus of English. But in another sense, the child's environment has been so much richer than the large language models because the child has been embedded in a social context, has been embodied in a uh, you know, body that involves sensory capacities and so on. And so they have all of these other kinds of input that the large language model doesn't have at all. Um, those are really big differences that I think are gonna make a difference to the nature of the representations and computations that are supporting the behavior that we see.